All right, yeah, it's Brawl's Day, my dudes. So, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be playing some Brawl, as you might expect, because there's no reason to play anything else. We're going to be playing an Alayla Artful Provocateur deck. So this is going to be our commander. One white, blue, and black for a 2-3 flying death touch lifelink. Wonderful. Fairy, warlock, for whatever that matters. Doesn't. Other creatures you control with flying get plus one plus oh, and whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a one one blue fairy creature token with flying. So there's a few ways you can go about making this deck. You can do it with flying tribal, since you get that little bit of a buff pseudo lord effect as it were. You can do it as an artifact deck, an enchantment deck, or you can do it as a combination of any of those three. We're going to be going primarily into the artifact side of things with Alayla, um, mostly doing mana rocks so we can do big mana plays and have some really long drawn out turns for us as well as making fairies as and when we do it as well because we're going to be making 2-1 flyers every time we play an artifact or an enchantment so uh, what is the deck kind of made up of? We've got a lot of mana rocks so we're going to be able to do a lot in our turn as I mentioned. We've got the all of the lockets that we can play, the Azorius, the Ozov and the Demir as well as banners which also pump up our uh, fairies. We're just going to name blue with this one so we have actually three ones. Uh, from a Layla, which is going to be pretty sweet. Icon of Ancestry, names fairies, obviously, since we're going to be throwing out fairies as an essence of fairy tribal here as well. Um, but yeah, we're not, I'm not going to go through it too much. There's just a few pieces in here. You know, Mystic Forge basically allows us to jump right through our deck. Uh, it's colorless or artifact spells, essentially. So we got 15 artifacts, and as far as colorless spells are concerned, uh, I believe it's just Ugin. Uh, they can also do um, artifacts that are coloured as well, so I believe we've got like Mace of the Valiant, Witching Well, things like that we can actually cast off of Mystic Forge, so it'd be nice if we can get that, and it's going to be played really well with all of our mana rocks as well, Firemind's Vessel, all of that stuff, so you know, if we're trying to get a Layla out there, then the mana rocks are going to help us with that, and if she's died a few times as well, it's going to help us to recast it. But as well, we can get some value off of Alayla if she's got a little bit of command attacks attached to her. We can play her, and then hopefully with the excess mana we'll be generating, we can play an extra artifact at least to make a 1-1. One -one. So the idea is hopefully to go wide and win that way, and just kind of use value artifacts as we go. Uh, we've got Golden Eggs, Gilded Globes for card draw, as well as Winged Words, because basically all of our creatures are going to be Flyers. Mirror Maid, which can target whatever we want it to, really, and Artifact or Enchantment. Uh, as far as enchantments are concerned, we've got Doom Foretold in here, Conclave Tribunal, and Prism Realm as removal, as well as an Oath of Kaya. Lots of good stuff, and even a Dance of the Mance, because if we get into the late game, then there's a good chance that we can actually maybe pull back some of this stuff. Uh, Golden Eggs and Guild Globes, for example, can actually be uh, sacrificed to themselves, so we can actually at least get Dance of the Mance to pull those back, which would be quite nice. Uh, other than that, though, it's just kind of a value deck. We've got Tezzeret, you know, benefits off of artifacts, of course. Shimmer Dragon has Hexproof, as long as we've got four or more artifacts. And we can tap two artifacts to draw cards as well, which is pretty sweet. Uh, uh, Ugin the Ineffable gives a cost reduction on colorless spells, which is basically our entire deck, minus a few key pieces. Meteor Golem's just removal. And, you know, we've got a nice mana base. Because we're a lot of colorless, we can afford to have a fair few colorless lands in here, so got Field of the Dead, because obviously we can definitely make Field of the Dead work. Cryptic Caves allows us to draw cards instead of flooding out. Blast Zone as a board wipe. And just a lot of tap lands I'm not really going to go into that much. Castle Vantress, Castle Lothwain. You could put Castle Ardenvale in. I just don't see it being that useful, to be honest. And I want to reduce the odds of having tapped one coloured lands, in all honesty. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go with it like that. And yeah, if you guys enjoy this kind of content, let me know either down in the comment section below, hitting the like button, or subscribing for more Brawl content in the future. Without further ado, let's get into the game. See you there. Alrighty then, we're in, and our opponent's playing Gulush, Tireless Pilgrim, 5 mana for a 3-5. When it ends the battlefield, you may search your library for a Field of the Dead, put it onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle your library, and then 5 and 2 to exile 3 cards and play them for free. So that's our opponent's plan. They're going to be playing Field of the Dead. We got one of our own, an actually reasonable 
reasonable mana, reasonable plays here. So, yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. I don't see too much of a reason to throw it on back, to be honest. Uh, so, I think I'm just going to go with uh, Field of the Dead. And we'll do, like, Command Tower and one of, like, Arcane Signet into Witching Well. Something like that, I think, for next turn. I want to make a turn where we can actually play, like, Azorius Locket and then use the mana to tap for Gateway Plaza. Something nice like that would be good. And our opponent with the Temple of Silencio. Alright, so Signet and Witching Well. I mean, we could get down a Layla next turn as well. I'm not against doing something like that. Um, I don't need this many lands. Honestly, I think I'm going to bottom both since we've got two lands in hand already. I just want more action, really. More artifacts to uh, use a Layla on. But this hand with our uh, Icon of Ancestry on Fairy could actually beat down our opponent uh, in no time at all. Especially with a, a banner as well. Alright, so I'm going to shock myself and we're going to go for a Layla. Hopefully we can dodge some removal here. It would be nice. If we can't, then we can just play down some mana rocks and get towards recasting a Layla next turn anyway. So, Temple of Mystery for our opponent. And they've probably got Golos mana next turn, so we've got to concern ourselves with that to a certain degree. Golden Egg, very nice. Alright, so... Mm, how do we want to go about this? We could do Icon... For fairy, or we could go mana rocks. Mana rocks let us do more stuff, so I'm more inclined to do something like that. I think so. We could do like Lockic, uh, banner actually, since it adds mana into something like Golden Egg. Name blue, since Elayla's blue and our fairies are also blue. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a Golden Egg. We do skip a land draw this way, since we don't have to tap land. Or the untapped mana here. You never know, though. Golden Egg could get us a land. Dance the Mance. Alright. Mm. Swinging for a lot, though. And it's pretty important that we do that in the early game. Once upon a time for our opponent. Interesting time to cast that. Alright, pass the turn. So, what's our opponent's plan, then? I imagine they've got something like Plane of Cleansing uh, in their deck, so having this Dance of the Mance is pretty nice. It means that we can get back all of these wonderful options. Uh, we can also sack the Witching Well and the Golden Egg as well, so we've got some targets for Dance of the Mance. So it has value already, to be honest. Uh, but next turn looks like it's just going to be something like Locket, Icon, Name Fairy, something like that. Because this will be Field of the Dead, no doubt. I have seen one Golos deck not pull Field of the Dead, but it was definitely not a common occurrence. Kaya's Ghost Form is very nice. Alright, so... Uh, let's see how much mana. I can't put Ghost Form on a Layla as well as play these two, uh, but I think playing Locket into Icon is just fine. They want to wipe the board, so be it. So we're going to name Fairy. And that is a lot of damage. Oosh. Threatening lethal. So they need a board wipe or they're dead. And we can recast a Layla, stick a ghost form on her next turn if they do have a board wipe. If they do have the plane of cleansing though, then it's going to be a little bit rough. But Dance of the Mance, I don't know. <laughs> Could kind of do something. I don't, I'm not sure... Uh, if we're going to really appreciate getting Planar Cleansing. Oh god. That's triple white. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it! Please! Don't! <laughs> be so rude. Realm Cloak Giant. Okay. Uh, to the command zone with you. Killing all the non-giants is fine for me. Honestly, the Field of the Dead itself is not really a problem. Uh, so, yeah, let's just get a Layla down. And unfortunately, it's exact mana, which means I can't play this Gateway Plaza again. This thing's actually becoming a problem. I don't think it's really an issue in most uh, situations, but right now, it's 
bit of a pain in the ass, not gonna lie. So what we can do when our opponent probably goes for a replayed Golos, unless they haven't got untapped mana, they do, all right, is we can frogify it to, oh, come on. Rude. Rude. All right, back to the command zone with you. We didn't even have our ghost form ready. All right, so they get to draw a card. We get to play a ghost guild globe into Gateway Plaza, probably. Castle Vantress, which is an untapped land, but doesn't really benefit us right now, right? So we got one, two, three, four mana, so nothing really I want to do here. I'm just going to go for the Gateway Plaza and pay for that. Pass the turn. Hmm. So it costs us eight for a Layla right now. We got four, five, six, seven mana right now. Which is unfortunate. Chandra, you say? Alright. It's all working out for our opponent now. I think we might be off the Alayla plan. And might be onto the Dance of the Mance plan instead. Start sacking all of our stuff. It depends. I kind of want to get a Layla and Ghost Form down at the same time if I can. Alright, so we're going to go with Castle Vantress. And we can crack our Guild Globe and our Golden Egg at the very least. Could do like a crack a locket as well, maybe. Definitely a possibility. Just fill up the graveyard a little bit while drawing cards. Maybe drawing into something good. Because uh, we don't have... Yeah, we are one mana short. So... Hmm. Trixie. Trixie little hobbits is... Let's go for a crack here. Ew. Not what I wanted to see, unfortunately. Although Tezzeret is actually pretty effective. Uh, it's going to be a tick up for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So actually, if we can get one more artifact, then Tezzeret is lethal. Hmm. Interesting. Ticks up, so we're taking six on this turn cycle so far. Kazmina. Not interested. You can minus on Planeswalkers, right? Yep. So, yeah. Chandra can minus ten. <laughs> uh, the very least she can, uh... She can minus seven to kill Tezzeret, which is very unfortunate. And there's a Ral. Huh. What a peak. The weight is killing me. Hmm. How much mana do I have? Can I play Mystic Forge here? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two. Ugh. I need something nice and cheap. And that's not it. Huh. So how do we want to go about this? Could dance to get the locket back, which is nice. Certainly nice. So we could do like crack, golden egg. Uh, let's add white. Crack, guild globe, for blue white. And then do like an X3. Uh, get those three back. Pay for that. Draw two cards. And that's the lethal amount we need for Tezzeret next turn. We've even got a Blast Zone. And we could do... Maybe a Mystic Forge. It doesn't really matter though, unless they gain life here. Uh, so, yeah. I guess we're going to go with the Mystic Forge. I mean, we're not being threatened by any of these Planeswalkers, per se. And there's a three fairy on top so can I do three fairy and then one two three four five yeah I can do three fairy into Tezzeret so if they've got a counter spell we can stop them there decisions 
And I think that means we've won. So ticks up, taking three. Is it just me, or is it getting a little warm in here? Makes a zomb. Good help is easy mm. to find in war. If they've got like clarion, that would be unfortunate. So it's actually like Golos super friends with a little bit of Golos action for Field of the Dead, I guess. Interesting. I've been meaning to try like a Super Friends deck for Brawl. I don't know. They end up feeling a little bit too linear, I think. It's just a matter of play as many Planeswalkers as humanly possible. Dot deck. Alright, we're at 13. Thank God that um, Oath of Teferi has rotated. Okay, so we can play Teferi Time Raveler. We've still got three, four, five, six mana left over here. So that gives us uncounterability. Tezzeret gives us lethal. Pew! You're dead. All right. Good old Tezzeret. He also made Elayla three mana as well, which is pretty sick. Uh, you shaved off seven points of her uh, command attacks. All right, pretty good. So her opponent did all they could, but in the end, they only dealt one point of damage to us. So good stuff. Let's go for another game. All righty then, we're in, and our opponent's playing Torbran, Thane of Redfell. So they're trying hard. Uh, it's a 4-mana creature with 2-4. If a red source would deal damage to an opponent or permanent opponent controls, deals that much damage, plus 2 instead. So most people should have probably seen that deck by now. It's, uh, it's pretty popular. This hand is fine, I guess. It's got a mana rock that gets me to 4. Mortify to kill Torbrand, maybe. Eh. If we can stick in all that glitters on our commander, actually, then we could actually see ourselves in a position where our opponent can't Torbran uh, our commander to death, and then the lifelink will just run away with this game. We'll see if that ends up being the case, of course. All right. We've got to be very careful with how we go about doing it, though. So they got an Ember Hauler, two damage to any target. It is what it is. Uh, we could go for a Guild Globe, or I could go for the Gateway Plaza. Uh, hmm. That's a tough one. Do I want to draw, or do I want to guarantee that I have three mana next turn? I think that's the safe play, right? It's probably the safe play. Let's get the Gateway Plaza out. The last game, Gateway Plaza was not very friendly to me, honestly, so maybe it's actually a cut for the deck? I don't know. It's just a nice tricolor land, I suppose, but tapping... Two mana for a turn is very weird. Ooh, seven dwarves. All right. That's the thing. And there's Tranquil Cove. Hmm. So. Ah, Mirror Maid on Heraldic Banner is a thing, but we could also Mirror Maid all that glitters, which is also pretty sick. Um, I'm going to go with the banner here, I think, a name blue. Blue. So all blue creatures get plus one plus oh, it's pretty sweet. And yeah, I'm still not considering really putting a Layla out there. I don't know when the right time would be though, is the problem. Because it's very easy to kill a three toughness creature. So it would be nice if I could dodge the death of a Layla. If I could do that, then I'll win. They did miss their land drop, so this actually could be the window. Um, I'm trying to think what kind of removal they'd have. There's a fair few things. They could crack their Ember Hauler, and then they only need to work at one point of damage to get rid of a Layla, but then that's a creature off the board as well, so... Interesting point. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for it. Let's see what they can do. There are a lot of removal spells they could have. But if I get a land drop, then I can just recast a Layla here. But yeah, there's no way she survives, right? Yeah. 
There she goes. All right, I will pick a Layla. Command zone, please. I just don't know we're really gonna get a better opportunity anyway. Especially now they've got their third land. Could go for Shimmer Dragon. 5-6 is not too bad. We can give it Hexproof if we can get out some more artifacts and enchantments. Come on, untap land. Good stuff. Alright, so do we play a Layla? Hmm. Oh, do we play a 5-6? Uh, I can't play a Layla and all the glitters next turn, unfortunately. But Shimmer Dragon with all the glitters plus Mirror Maid targeting all the glitters is still pretty good. That's probably just going to close out this game easy, really, I would imagine. Yeah, let's go for it. If we get a land, we can even go Guild Globe, all the glitters, Mirror Maid. So we got ourselves a 6-6. Six, six. It's gonna get really big. All the glitters, for those who don't know, gives you plus one, plus one for each artifact and slash or enchantment you control. All right, uh, you can have all of this damage. It seems a bit weird. Down to 10. I don't really wanna open up Shimmer Dragon to four points of burn damage. That feels like it would suck. Ah, one away from an Alayla being online with uh, all the glitters. I really want the lifelink is the thing. Uh, what do you do? When you've cast an instant or sorcery, creature can't block this turn. Maybe we go with a Mortify and a Guild Globe, maybe? And then hope for a land drop that can do Alayla plus all the glitters. I'm hoping our opponent just taps out for like Torbran and then Alayla should close out the game. This also puts an artifact in play to pump the Alder Glitters. Yeah, there's the land, so I'm liking that. Uh, so we leave up and Mortify. And we just kill something. So our opponent does have this dude right here, so I'm going to have to get rid of him so we can block. And then if they kill Shimmer Dragon, we're not really that upset. We can even tap two artifacts here to actually draw a card, so that's pretty cool. And it would be a plus three, plus three, putting her on six toughness. Actually, well, if we can go a turn after and do Mirror Maid, then the game is over officially. Crystal Slipper. Okay. So plus one, plus oh, and haste to the equipped creature. And I'm just going to get in. Okay. I'm going to make them tap out here, I think. So we're going to go here... And I expect some points to go at Shimmer Dragon, which would hopefully tap them out of being able to kill a Layla. Sure, strike. Sure. So, tap, tap. Draw Witching Well. That is a big, weird, though. Prankle. Okay. So, Island. A Layla. And all the glitters on a Layla. Make another blocker have a 6-6 six, six with Death Touch and Life Link. And be very careful how we block. Not going to block the, the weird here, because obviously it can kill a Layla. And if we get the Mirror Maid, then we're going to win, because we can just chain out all of these artifacts as well, pumping up and gaining too much life. Uh, Torbran? What does Torbran do? Kind of taps our opponent out of the victory here. We just chump with our Fairy Token. Yeah, let's jump there. Since it can do uh, six damage, thanks to the Torbran, we're just going to block with the Fairy Token. We'll be making plenty more anyway, off of all of these plays. So let's do Mirror Maid on all the Glitters, attach into a Layla. She's now an 11-11. We'll go Demir Locket, make another Fairy. She's a 13-13, and... Eh, we'll go Midnight Clock. Mana efficiency, right? F oh, yeah, and also, because it adds mana, we can do Witching Well. I forgot this thing adds mana. A 17-17. Uh, we'll just put all the lands to the bottom. Don't really need them. 
Gain 17 life. And our plan has worked out. We are presenting lethal. We're on 23 life. We've got four blockers to their four attackers. E. Z. Good game. So yeah, it was just a matter of finding the point where we could tap. Tap our opponent out. And then pull all of this, this god tier drawing off. But yeah, double all at Glitters is pretty good. That's why I added Mirror Maid, because I think there's a lot of situations where Mirror Maid can just target an absurd card. Like, even something as little as Heraldic Banner being copied makes these into four ones, which is disgusting. We get an icon, we can make them uh, plus two, plus two that way as well. Midnight Clock, we can chain that in such a way where we can uh, get additional seven card hands and just chain through our deck doing crazy stuff. There's a lot of really good Mirror Maid targets, but I think All the Glitters is probably the best one there. But yeah, lethal, and <laughs> we ended another game being on a really absurd life total, so pretty good. Pretty good. Alrighty then, we're in, and it's a bit of a slow hand, honestly. I'm not blown away by it. It also doesn't have white mana initially, so this is probably going to be a free mulligan. Our opponent's playing Ashiok Dream Render, 3 mana, 5 loyalty planeswalker, can't search our library, and player puts the top 4 cards of their library into their graveyard, and then exile the graveyard. So we don't want graveyard synergy either, or at least not um, ones that Ashiok can respond to. So there's two basic decks that this one could be. It could be Blue Black Mill, or it could be Petitioners. Um... So, it is what it is. Uh, let's get to the free mulligan. And the mana looks better, the mana rocks look better, and we've got Spark Double on Double Alayla. I love this hand. Wow. I'm actually in love with it. Alright, let's play an Islands. Pass the turn. Islands scarier than colourless or white, and we want to send a message of intimidation to our opponent. Overwhelmed Apprentice. Alright, so our opponent's trying with their mill. Yeah, it's not an advisor, which I think is what a uh, petitioner's taps with, I think, something like that. Alright. Swamp go. Next turn, gonna play a locket, and then the turn after it's a Layla time. Does our opponent have lands? They must have lands. Yeah. They are technically playing at a better sequence than we are. I'm guessing maybe mono blue? Or is it mana screwed? <laughs> Augur of Bolas, as is the tradition, whiffs on its hit. I want to love this card, but good lord, it never, it never hits. <laughs> Alright, let's just go with uh, Demir Locket. I don't think it really matters which one we pick, to be honest. Ozov, Demir. They're all the same here. Ah, blue black mill. Alright. So, lots of removal spells we could expect from our opponent. Callous Dismissal. Okay. Well, that's fine for me. It just allows me to replay my locket after a Layla. I was kind of hoping that I could, yeah, ramp into something like having Gateway Plaza come into play tap next turn, or this turn, with my free mana. But, just gonna have to go the old Layla train. And can we do. Uh, we can't quite do. Demir lock it into spark double, unfortunately. So maybe we can get a one mana artifact or enchantment so we can double trigger a Layla. That'd be cute. If they've got removal, then they should be using it. Narset is annoying, but actually beatable. Uh, yeah, she's only really annoying. Ugh. Converted mana cost 3 or greater on the epic downfall. She's only really annoying on the fact that we have to kill her first before we winged words or crack our Demir lockets. It's really kind of minimal issue, to be honest, though. Um, do we want a spark double now? We probably do, right? Uh, we probably do. Spark double, target a Layla, and then we've got 6 mana next turn. We don't quite, actually, because of the Gateway Plaza, annoyingly as well. Yeah, cut this card. Cut it. <laughs> it's, it's annoying me. Three times in a row, it's turned up at a bad time. Um, eh, I think maybe I'll just play my lockets out. 
and then we'll spark double later. I want loads of mana. This makes uh, threats as well, so that epic downfall is not going to leave us with nothing. So now we can do Orzov lock it, and then we can take Narset off being useful as well. So hit Narset for two. We're in no rush to kill our opponent right now. They haven't really presented us with uh, any crazy <laughs> mill yet. Doesn't mean it isn't too far off though. Uh, epic downfall is sorcery speed. So there is that. This looks like a board wipe. So I'm going to offer trades. It is a very weird attack. It's like swamp ritual of soot or something weird like that. Epic downfall. Yeah, sure. Command zone. Odd. Alright. So now we can replay Alayla. And we can do the Gateway Plaza. Oh, don't tell me you've got Disdainful Stroke. Oh, that's annoying. How irritating. Alright. Gateway Plaza. Tap the locket. Pass the turn. Hmm. Yeah, Spark Double might not actually have a good target. We're like kind of like blue black control then with Ashok, I guess. So the mill has been subpar up till now. Ooh, Prankle. I do love me some Prankle. So Prankle kind of has to kill Narset, otherwise the card draw on it, which is probably what I want to use, isn't going to be that useful. So let's play Prankle. Also potentially get some counters out of our opponent. If they've got um, the counter legendary spell. Or a Thought Collapse, sure. Also works for me. Transmutation. Not too bothered about that, to be honest. I don't really want a murderous rider, the Narset. So I might just Godless Shrine tapped and pass. Don't want a winged words, because Narset. Obviously. Yeah, let's just tap land it. Pass the turn. It's a weird spot to be in. But we can play a Layla next turn. I think the best thing we could get maybe is Kaya's Ghost Form if they don't have more counter magic. It very much feels like more of a control deck than a mill deck. It's got some mills spattered around in it, you know, the Apprentice and the Thought Collapse, but... They keep leaving their mana open instead of playing their Ashiok, which says that they've got removal and counter magic, so... This delayed response here kind of says that they've got interaction as well. Do they play their Ashiok and leave no double blue? Interesting. Jace. So it's going to go at me, presumably. Yep. Land, land. I actually kind of wouldn't have minded a land. Alright. So, where do we go from here? Do we we probably kill Jace, I think. Although Ashiok does represent a lot more mill in total. It's a weird place to be. Yeah, well. uh, hold the Arcane Signet for fairy value. I guess we kind of have to... I think this is the least likely time for them to have counter magic, so I want to play my Layla down. But we can't force value out of it at the moment. Witching well into the bin. That would have been a nice one. I'll tell you what would be nice, if we could get a Dance of the Mance. I think we could target a fair few things in here, right? We actually can't. Wow, there's only a Witching Well. Never mind, take that back. I feel like we should have rolled over a lot more than that over this period of time, but here we are. You can always crack some lockets later down the line, I suppose. But the plan here is going to be Spark Double on Alayla into Arcane Signet, and then maybe Combat Kill Narset Winged Words, something like that. Might even want a Murderous Rider Jace, because he is kind of close to ulting eventually anyway. 
Very happy to see just one black mana from our opponent. Probably it locks off quite a fair few of their cards, removal-wise. Floats the colorless for Murmuring Mystic. Alright. Oh, Mace of the Valiant. That's so good. Okay, so. Potential for blowout here, not gonna lie. But we're going for it, because that's what Spark Double's here for. Wow. Double a Layla. And then let's go with, I guess, Mace of the Valiant. Get that going. Gives you plus one, plus one for each counter on it, and it gets a counter whenever a creature enters, so let's get two more fairies. They didn't have a board wipe before, so do they now? Let's kill Narset, because I kind of want to draw cards. Alright. I feel like we're in a really, really absurd position. We can get a little bit blown out by a board wipe, so... Dance of the Mance into the bin. Ugh. And Midnight Clock as well. That's one of our answers to Mill. Not less so on the Ashiok, but... They haven't played Ashiok, so I really don't know what they're planning here. Duress me. Okay. So, they're in tough position right now. I'm sure they don't really want me drawing cards, but at the same time, Murderous Rider on Jace is not very good for them. But he is going to die in combat by the looks of things. If they can't com uh, kill down... Kill down? If they can't counter the swift end of the Murderous Rider anyway. There's now Shock. That's dead. All the glitters. No! And Mirror Maids! <laughs> The combo from last game. And Legion's End. Alright. It's a pretty good card. And we drew terrible cards. Hmm. Does this give Vigilance? It gives Vigilance, right? It does. Ooh, tasty. Alright, I think maybe I'm going to crack a locket though, just so we have some additional options here. I could even do a Cryptic Caves. Could try for the Cryptic Caves, yeah. Let's do that one first. We've lost down to the Mance already, so... Ooh, Icon on Fairy. Oh, I like that. Alright. Icon named Fairy. That's just as good as equipping with the Mace of the Valiant, which we don't really need to do just now. Uh, we'd probably have to kill Jace, though, because we're not really getting in at Jace. Uh, let's swing first and then get rid of the bird tokens. They're less likely to defend something that's just going to die anyway. So, yeah, let's thread and kill Jace, which they will block. And we will gain lots of life. Jump and jump. Up to 34. Life total, probably not going to matter in this matchup, but here we are. And then we're going to have to get rid of Jace, because he's got that ult, which we don't like. Draw seven cards. I'd rather you don't. This isn't over. We figure out a solution. And we can go Dismal Batwater. And then pass ye old turn. We can give plus four, plus four, and vigilance to one of our fairy tokens, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It would be plus five, plus five if we played the murderous rider as well. So it gives us three pretty damn good attackers. The question becomes, do we even try to pressure Ashiok, or do we just leave it as it is? See, I'm not certain that Ashiok is really worth attacking. I think maybe just focusing our opponent's life total might be a good idea. I just didn't want that seven card draw from Jace, though. That one we couldn't let stand. But we're on 27 cards. We're about halfway to losing. Oh, God. What are they counting for? Why are you counting? I don't like it. Uh, well, they can't have mass manipulation. They just don't have the blue for it. Ugh. Those were some good cards. Unfortunately. Oath of Kaya and then Emery. Definitely not too happy to see those go. Got Fabled Passage. Uh, Icon of Ancestry is never hitting anything in a million years, so not too focused on that one, honestly. 
I think maybe we're on the combat damage plan, so I'm going to play the... Hmm. I could actually crack a, a locket, perhaps, for extra card draw. Let's go Fabled Passage. Thin the deck a bit. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, Ashiok. Oh, Ashiok. All right, then. Uh, moving on. Let's, uh, let's draw two cards. Narset's not around, is she? No, nope. just checking. God, I hate Ashiok sometimes. Ooh, Eugene. That's a good one. Fortunately, Fireman's Vessel is a tapped artifact. So I think I'm just going to equip the Mace of the Valiant here on one of my fairies instead. And next turn we'll do like Eugene plus Fireman's Vessel with the cost reduction. So all attack our opponent's face. Pretty decent damage here. They can block eight here. And then they're taking a fair amount. They're essentially on board wipe or bust right now. They can send Blast Zone only up to three. They need four for it to really matter. Although they can get the Mace of the Valiant with three. And Icon, actually, so they can take a fair amount of power off the board. And Demir lock it. So yeah, Blast Zone on three is not the worst. I just don't know if it's really going to save our opponent here when I Eugene. And then... Play cost reduction on my colorless artifacts, getting double the Layla triggers every time. I think this alone is just going to get the game. So milling us first. Feel the dead into exile. Sure. We're at 16 cards in our deck. They're pretty close. Blows the blast zone on three. He's going to kill Ashiok as well. But Ashiok was... Pretty close to death anyway. So the best thing we can draw is a colorless artifact for Udgeen to get that lovely cost reduction on. So Conrad the Grim, not fussed about that at all. And yep, that's gonna be the game. Wunderbar, let's go for one more match. Alrighty then, we're in, and our opponent's playing Niv Mizzet Reborn. I'm sure most of you know what this one does already, but five colors of mana for a 6-6 six, six with flying, and when it ends the battlefield, you reveal the top ten cards of your library, and you pick the guild color pairs. You get to pick one of each of those, and then basically draw that card, while not using the word draw, so Narset, screw you. Uh, so the way I've built Niv Mizzet is removal tribal, uh, you can do many different variations of this card, but we're going to assume our opponent's on removal tribal. Uh, this hand's actually fine. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Let's do Mirror Maid on Midnight Clock and draw a million cards or something like that. Emery also could probably get us some decent value. I'm going to keep this hand. The mana's also acceptable. I mean, we needed the double blue. We really also need some black mana, but I'm sure we won't struggle too much with that. Emery could roll over a locket or something like that, and that would fix our, our mana just nicely. Uh, I think there's two out of three got black mana in them. So, you know, we'll never see. We've got Arcane Signet as well, which is uh, triple colours for us in particular. Alright, so let's just go with Command Tower. Pass the turn. Keep our opponent guessing what colour we are. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. Our opponent with good old uh, Once Upon a Time in their hand. Either that or they've set a stop on each of my stops. I'm going to guess they've got Once Upon a Time though. They wanted me to know that. So, either firing it off or waiting. I'm an advocate of waiting. Ooh, there we go. That's not too bad. Play tap land. It's first time Gateway Plaza has not been terrible because we had nothing to do on two anyway. And then next turn we'll go Island, maybe Midnight Clock, get that ticking. We might need the card advantage, honestly, when we're playing against a Niv-Mizzet deck like this one. Uh, looks like well, it's Tapland City so far for them. We know they've got the um, 
once upon a time gonna fire that off when they start caring about their cards all right so we do have turn four a Layla so how do we want to proceed I kind of want to do the midnight clock get this going pretty soon card advantage in our deck is not terribly strong so being able to draw seven cards almost almost guaranteed I feel like unless they've got a uh, the night dryad thing in Selesnia whose name always escapes me and I hate that despite how much I can never remember the name of that card but I kind of want to stagger midnight clock and mirror maid so that this has uh, enough counters less than this card here to allow us to use the seven cards from the first midnight clock. That's the hope, at least. Arcane Signet. Alright, so, I guess we're going to play a Layla. She's probably going to die, though, is the problem. But there's not too much we can do about that. I'm just going to go for it, and then Watery Grave tapped. So, could have a counter spell here. There is the blue counter legendary creature card, which, I mean, if you're in blue, there's a good reason to run it in most decks. I don't really do that, because I've got uh, Froggify and Kazmina's Transmutation. Instead of countering them, I just make their planes uh, their creature um, cards mostly useless. That's my plan, at least. Alright. Layla has landed. Now, as I mentioned, though, uh, Niv-Mizzet can very much be removal tribal. So, the likelihood that she stays around for very long is quite low. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put her into exile, I think, because I'm just going to rankle... How do we want to go about doing this? Rankle can get back a Layla. Or I could just replay a Layla. I'm not sure which one I want to do, actually. I'll put her in the command zone, because there is such a thing as last known uh, location. As you can see, a Layla is highlighted when I click on Deputy. That means if Deputy dies, I get a Layla back, unless I cast her from the command zone first. So that actually gives me some options. I could, like, kill my Emery if I really wanted to. I haven't really decided what I want to go about doing yet. Tome of Legends. That is a good one. Because I kind of want an extra... I want a creature so I don't have to lose my Rankle. Prankle, sorry. Nearly nearly said his name right. Ooh, close one. I also kind of want an Alayla token down so I can crack those to Prankle as well. But that's not as realistic to me, I don't think. Yeah, maybe we just go with an Emery. Uh, so let's do Castle Vantress. We can then go maybe Tome of Legends. It's going to give Cuffs Reduction on the Emery. And we can do uh, Arcane Signet as well. I don't mind that. One mana Emery already. And this gives us a little bit of a mill. So hopefully Emery can do something next turn. If she can't, no worries. Hopefully she doesn't roll over any... Uh, terribly good cards. Eh, she got us a Witching Well for next turn. And then we can use the Tome of Legends card draw off the Arcane Signet or the Midnight Clock here, so not too bad. Uh, this costs three to activate, right? Yep. I'm not really interested necessarily in accelerating the Midnight Clock. I'm probably just going to Mirror Maid the Midnight Clock next turn. Here comes Golos, Searcher of the Field of the Dead. Which is no doubt what they're going for. Don't waste my time. Unless they're fixing mana. Which, uh... Somewhat needs fixing, I guess. Yep, just fixing the mana. Alright, Temple of Triumph for the Scry. So, Emery kind of hasn't done anything good. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm interested in prankling. For sure. Alright, let's draw a card off of the tome. Firemind's Vessel. Not too bad. Yeah, so let's get Prankling. That leaves us with two mana. Actually, three mana, sorry. Midnight Clock. I always forget the Midnight Clock mana. Yeah. 
Let's get that going. I'm not really going to be cracking a midnight clock here, because I... Uh, sorry, I'm not really going to be getting the witching well here, so I don't really need to activate Emery. So let's just get in. And deal some damage. They either get rid of Golos, or they get rid of the Deputy of Detention. Each player sacks a creature. I don't really want to give them card advantage. Uh, but discarding doesn't seem necessarily worth it with Niv-Mizzet either. So I'm just going to make them sack a, a creature. We'll get rid of Emery. Let's see if we can get our Layla back. That would be lovely. Looks like we can. Last known location kicks in. Alayla coming back. Most people don't know about that, so I was kind of leveraging the chance that that might be the case. And then we'll stick Midnight Clock into play again. And we can even Tome of Legends, which is pretty sweet. Alright. Double triggers. Once Midnight Clock gets to 12, we'll have seven more cards. And then once the next Midnight Clock comes in, then we'll have another seven more cards. So card advantage should be insane and... It's another reason why I don't really care about the graveyard for Emery, because it's just going to get shuffled back in. Here comes Niv Mizzet. See how well they hit. Alayla does have Death Touch, so might consider using that. That's some good cards here, actually. Oh. Let's probably want to do this one instead. So we've got Simic, Azorius, Golgari. And that's it, actually. It's a draw three. Gonna go with the finality. So a really nice draw for us would be a way to pump up a Layla. Kazmina's transmutation. Hmm. I'll take three, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how I want to proceed actually. But we're gonna make them use the finality. And I'll lock down something like Golos with the transmutation, perhaps. It's gonna be a long game. Discarding to hand size. They didn't make that land drop this turn, did they? Huh. Drop to counter and a growth spiral. Yeah, they don't have lands in hand. It's both a bit of good and a bit of bad, unfortunately. Um, Alayla, does it tell me how long she's been in here? This commander will cost two more to cast the next time it's cast from the command zone. So she's going to cost six next turn when she inevitably dies. Uh, okay. So I don't necessarily have to get any mana rocks into play. Uh, but she is very much going to die. Let's go with Temple of Silencio. Murderous rider. Ah... Uh, I don't particularly care. I think I'm going to put that to the bottom. And I think maybe... Maybe we have to transmute something even though it's not really going to benefit us that much. Uh, we've got... Enough mana here. I need to force that board wipe, otherwise it might never come. And yeah, let's swing in, see what they want to do. I'm happy for a trade there. That's fine. Dang it. Alright, fine. Kills Prankle. And can kill Niv Mizzet with a transmutation. It just doesn't seem worthwhile to me, honestly. So I'm just going to pass. I want to use the transmutation on Golos, essentially, so he doesn't have the activations. Finality. I feel like I can block Niv Mizzet until the end of time, really, with fairy tokens, which keeps it out of the command zone to be recast. We're actually going to go with the Golos 1-1 one, one, uh, to the command zone. Please, Alayla. Alright, and let's draw a card since I tapped out. Heraldic Banner. Nice. I like that one. 
All right. So, a Layla coming back out. Counter on the Tome of Legends. And we can do Banner, right? Yeah, we can definitely do Banner. Make some fairies. Name blue for the fairy tokens. Can we even do this? We can even do this. Azorius Locket. Another fairy. And a transmutation on Golo so they can't reactivate it. And getting that out of the way while there's a Doman's Veto in play as well is also pretty sweet. Alright. So, they're back on needing more board wipes and removal, basically. We've just accelerated our mana so we can recast a Layla very easily. We're about to draw seven cards as well, which nullifies our opponent's card set, honestly. Uh, it's probably in their best interest to empty their hand, because I believe this is... Is this both... Uh, it's... And it's just me, actually. Huh. I was going to say, uh, if it was our opponent as well, then we get rid of uh, their card advantage. But honestly, just matching them is fine, as it is. Matching them and then inevitably matching them again with another Midnight Clock. Fabled Passage. So yeah, like, they, they wipe the board, I just draw seven cards. Maybe even get a Kai's Ghost form, that's probably the best thing I could draw for a Layla. We do have to work through that Vito, though. Obviously, our deck is very susceptible to a Dovin's Vito. Hmm. I don't ever like it when our opponent is counting mana. It never goes well. So, crack the Passage. They don't have four blue, so it's not going to be uh, mass steal, mass manipulation, mass manips, however you want to call it. Bedevil. Okay, command zone, please. <laughs> I could put it in the graveyard so that when my graveyard gets shuffled in, there's a chance that I draw a Layla for four mana. I think I'd rather have it in the command zone, honestly, though. Okay. Passing the turn. Afraid of my two ones. I would be two. They're pretty crazy. Alright, so one of the Midnight Clocks goes off and draws us seven cards. Lovely. Alright. It's first time ever getting Midnight Clock to go off. Let's see what we get. Eugene is very good. As is Mystic Forge. Oh my. Oh my, I'm spoilt for choice. I am spoilt for choice. It's in our best interest as well to get empty-handed so that the next Midnight Clock uh, is going to be useful. So I'm less inclined to use the Mystic Forge uh, necessarily. Although it can get us towards like Tezzerets and cool things like that. I've got the Veto to worry about, so I don't really want to run into that. Um, I just don't see how we're going to bait our opponent into like letting Eugene resolve without going for like Mystic Forge. I think we have to do Mystic Forge for the Vito first and that leaves us with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Yeah, it's more than enough to play Eugene and then go off a little bit. Plenty of blockers. So this almost certainly gets that Vito out. It's too powerful not to in an artifact-based deck, right? Yeah, there we go. Alright. The bait, the trap, was set and sprung. Let's go, Eugene. Oh, they've got more counter spells? Oh, no, they haven't. Alright, good stuff. So, that gives us some options. We can draw a card with Tome of Legends. Witching Well, okay. So how much value can we get out of Eugene without him dying? We basically have to tick up. I don't want to kill niv Mizzet because that's just a recasted card. Don't care about an A-take because I've got blockers. And I think we have to go for emptying our hand with the lockets and the Witching Wells, things like that. I 
Although, obviously, casting them after an Alayla is also nice. It just feels a bit too greedy for me right now. Uh, Conclave Tribunal. It's fine, I suppose. I might need it, honestly, depending on our opponent's draw. If they kill Eugene, then our Meteor Golem's going back to 7 mana, which is not ideal. If I could do, like, Alayla into Tribunal, that's going to be much better. I think really our best draws right there, though, were probably something like... I mean, Spark Double's pretty good. Uh, Tezzeret's pretty good. We're not going to attack. I want to keep Eugene around as best as I can. Uh, what else is pretty good? Dance of the Mance? No. <laughs> we shuffled our graveyard back in already, so that's not too useful. Yeah, I think Tezzeret's kind of what we want. There is also all the glitters. That's getting pretty disgustingly good. Saxa Planeswalker. Alright. So they have the answer. It's fine. It's fine, I guess. I'll get over it. And of Rasky! On midnight clock, I'm assuming. Nope, it's a huge mistake. Alright. So. Chomp. I've got... Eh, if they've got Shock, would they run Shock? I'm going to make sure Vraska dies. I'm going to make sure I'm absolutely certain that Vraska dies without me having to use, like, Meteor, Golem, or Tribunal. That's the idea. I want her dead. She's dead to me. Alright, so let's go, go, go. Gadget, go. Get Golos dead as well. Hit our opponent in the face. Die, opponent's Planeswalker. What's the likelihood they can get Golos back? I guess if they've got Tamio in their deck, which most should run. I mean, uh, Singleton less so, I guess, because it's a bit harder to actually hit on the plus one, but the minus is definitely very, very useful. So, Alayla leaves us with a lot of mana, so we're just going to cast Alayla. Get a Tome Trigger. And then we can we can even cast Meteor Golem? That is disgusting. That is filthy. I don't know if I want to though. because uh, they're already uh recasting Niv Mizzet right now, so really giving them options is not something I had in mind. Uh could probably tap the tome, see if we draw anything better. Castle Lockthwain, it's not great. Uh let's just go with the tap land, I guess. And I don't really want to Tribunal anything. Uh, it gives me another dude. Actually, I mean, getting another dude here is fine. Because it makes them recast Niv-Mizzet. Well, it's not always going to be good. Them recasting Niv-Mizzet into my Meteor Golem is a lot of damage. And with the right draws, I could definitely see myself winning. Either next turn or the turn after. So... Letting it go. I also want to get my hand empty as well for Midnight Clock. It's getting pretty close to the time where our hand should be empty. So I want to make sure that's actually going to be the case. Opponent shocking themselves really good for us. We're looking to close out the game in the next two turns. So for sure shocking is very, very useful. I mean, board wipes are going to suck if they've got them. But we knew that. I just can't really see how they survive another midnight clock from us. There's just far too much value already in play. Looks like they might have uh, casualties of war. We have enchantments. The enchantment itself actually gets back Niv Mizzet. And it's the only one. So they can hit. Land, enchantment, artifact, creature. This hovering is too much like Casualties of War. Yeah. It's really a Conclave Tribunal and the Midnight Clock. Ew. Alright, to the command zone. And then they get Niv Mizzet back as well. Yep. That sucks. That sucks big time. Uh, they've got Tamio. They are running it. Deafening Clarion. And that is literally it. 
So, as draws go, it's not the best. You want to get in with your Golos? Uh, kind of want to push damage. So I'm just going to take one. All that glitters. Beautiful. Um, single target removal sucks, but uh, they do have it as well. They've got Tamiyo to go get it. So they can do like Clarion, Tamiyo, minus Casualties of War. That's really bad. That's really bad for us. There's not really much I can do about it. The Ola Glitters doesn't really save me from it. And I can do at most six damage here. I guess I could do... Actually, do I have it? If I do Meteor Golem, then I get plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I've got it, right? If they've got um, the Boros removal spell, I could see myself losing. I'm going for it, though. I think it's too close. They need a pretty specific removal spell here. I guess they don't. They can do it in response, right? If they've got, like, even something as little as a shock. But I imagine it's Justice Strike is the one I'm thinking of. Uh, so let's go for it. Let's see if we've got lethal. Um, I'll make them kill the spirit token. 13. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, boy! Alright. Yeah, we were going to lose if, uh, if I didn't go for it there. I'm pretty sure we were anyway. It's going to be too much value being able to recur a justice, um, casualties of war. It just means that we can't really resolve anything, so I went for the push. It paid off. There was a lot that could have actually blown us out there, even so much, so much as like a negate would have just ended the game. Uh, not immediately, but of course, the, there's too much value there already. So, yeah, pretty good. Hope you guys enjoyed this one anyway. Uh, this Alayla deck is pretty sweet. The only situation I found that I didn't like, ooh, some packs, was the, um, the land. So, if you wanted to change the deck, that's probably the only thing I would change about this list, is getting rid of... Uh, the, 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 the Gateway Plaza. It was a little annoying. I don't know if it was... Uh, we didn't play enough games with it, I don't think, for it to really shine, but... I mean, three out of four times today, I think it was, that Gateway Plaza actually really sucked. I think I'd rather just have another Swamp or a Plains. Uh, over a gateway plaza or even another dual land. I think there's a tap land that I haven't included like guild gates or something like that So yeah swap out gateway plaza for something else. It's not really just worth the three mana uh, Land here in all fairness. So yeah, let's open up some packs shall we? I believe war of the spark is just gems unless it's a mythic It is just gems. How exciting. We got a smut As well in our pack and what else? Some wild cards. Cool. A Lockmere Serpent. I am running out of good cards to actually pull from these packs. I'm getting pretty close to the end of Eldrain because it's actually kind of a small set, which is unfortunate considering the amount of time we've got to wait until the next one. I'm going to be not able to open packs in a while. I'm already actually there now uh, due to like the Mastery Pass unlocking packs. Uh, by the time I get to the end of the Mastery Pass, I will start opening gems, which is not something I want to do. Case in point, that War of the Spark pack. I never wanted that to happen, but here we are. But yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. It's a doozy. I like this deck. It's probably on the competitive scale, definitely, as far as Brawl is concerned. Though, of course, this channel's not necessarily about competitiveness. It's nice when it happens, but it's not really a requirement. But yeah, this is maybe, it's maybe up there. I like this deck. Uh, there's a lot of things to do with it, like... I think Mirror Maid makes for some really interesting games. And then you've got your top end, Eugenes and Tezzerets, which just absolutely do some wonders. I'm not sure about the Doom Foretold. Um, that one is a mystery to me as to whether this card is good. We never even saw it once in any of the games, so I haven't been able to play with that card in this deck. But we have a lot of like rocks that we can sacrifice. It's just a matter of whether our opponent can keep up with us on that one. And then we're forced into, like, cracking Prism Realms and things like that instead of Doom Foretold, which is less than ideal. But uh, other than that, though, I don't know. It's a mystery. If you guys play this deck, let me know how this card performs if you get the chance. Uh, Mystic Forge also never got the chance, but it was good bait to win the game. So I was uh, 
I was very pleased with this deck. Hope you guys enjoyed it though. Like and subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.